how to prepare, and some homestead type stuff, self-reliance type stuff. Hey everybody, this is Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness, and that's what we're talking about today. I'm going to go over um, a bunch of stuff, what we did today, talking about container gardening, you know, stuff around those, that kind of stuff. And then I'm also going to talk about preparedness. How do you prepare? What are you preparing for? How do you start? Those kind of things. So first, please subscribe, hit the like button, comment below, and share the videos. Help me, help us, help our community with the algorithm to do well and to succeed and to reach others so that we can build more assets out there, more preppers. We can reach more people and awaken more people so that we get we will have to deal with less, the, a fewer threats if something big happens. Have more people prepared, at least a general level of preparedness. So stay tuned for the video. I love you. Sorry. Stay tuned for the video. That sounded really weird. <laughs> Normally I say, I love you and blessings to you and yours. Okay, that sounds different. That one sounded weird. I don't necessarily... Love you. I love my wife and my family. <laughs> I love you as my brothers and sisters, though. No, seriously. So, okay, in this part of the video, I want to talk about prepping because I show a lot of, you know, homestead type things, um, gardening and stuff like that, but not everybody can do that. Not everybody, you know, can build one of these things behind me, compost bin. Hoo ya! I built that. I'm proud of it. It may not be pretty, but it works awesome. But anyway, you may not have the property. You may not live rurally. You may not be raising your own chickens. You may not have your own you know, garden and garden plot. I know some people out there have a much bigger garden than me, more like a farm type thing. Um, you know, tractors, those kind of things. Yeah, and uh, you know, acre, acres of garden. That's who ya. But everybody may not be in the situation. Some people may be urban preppers. You may be apartment preppers. Um, I tend to think of preppers as kind of people that live like me. But I tend to forget sometimes that some of you guys out there, a lot of you guys out there probably are just preppers. Maybe you live suburban. Maybe you live urban. Um, maybe you live rural, but you don't have a bunch of land or something. I don't know. Everybody's in different situations. But so I figured I'd talk about preparedness in general. Food storage is key, obviously. We talk about that all the time. Water storage is also key. Um, the key, what I think is, is vital that you need to think about is what is applicable to you in your AO. AO is area of operations, where you live. Um, is water more important to you? Is food more important to you? Can you forage for food? Can you hunt for food? Can you fish for food? What all those kind of things are that are available to you? Um, even if you live in an apartment, you can still go, you can still go hunting, you can still go fishing, uh, those kind of things. Is there a community garden? Uh, are you in a city where there's like rooftop gardens? Get involved in them if you can, you know? I, I don't know how all that works. Sorry, I'm ignorant to that kind of stuff just because that's not how I live. Uh, I don't live in that kind of situation, so I'm not really aware. I know the different small towns that I've, that I've um, been... Uh, in even on base, uh, military some military bases had like community garden area, uh, so that's pretty cool. So look into that. Check that out if you uh, um, don't know. You can't have your own garden, and you want to learn about gardening from others. That's a really good way to do it. You know, go there when other people are gardening and learn from them, and help out and participate, and then reap the rewards for the harvest. Uh, but and a lot of people talk about like a year of food storage. Okay, that is very good. Very good, highly recommended. But how do you start off? How you start off, very, very simple. Prepping is a big, there's a lot to it. But it is still fairly simple. It is what does it take for you to live? And how you can start prepping is very easy. Um, start working on skills, start learning things that will help you be more efficient in a bad situation. Um, there, there's a plethora of skills. I've done videos on it. I'm not really going to go into that. But every time you go to the store, buy an extra can of 
canned meat, buy an extra can of canned veggies, buy an extra can of canned fruit, maybe a thing of peanut butter, maybe a, a pound, five pound, 10 pound, 25 pounds of beans and or rice. You know, if you buy like a, you know, five or 10 pound bag of rice and beans every time you go there, uh, say 10 pound. If you're buying a 10 pound bag of rice, 10 pound bag of beans, uh, you know, a couple cans of this and that, you're, you're really, you're looking at like maybe 20 bucks ish, you know? So maybe you're not in the situation where you can add 20 bucks, but so just, uh, par pare that down. Sorry. That's what I was getting at. Buy one pound of beans, one pound of rice, or mix it up a little bit at a time. Like that's why I do those preps of the day videos, just a little preps of the day. And I encourage people to do a little bit every day towards preparedness. It can be going out and going for a walk. It can be doing sit-ups in your front living room. You can do push-ups, do some pull-ups, whatever it may be. Work on some fitness. It may be, um, you know, watching videos, learning a new skill set. It may be gardening. It may be um, physically, you know, going on Amazon and being like, do, 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 being an Amazon prepper for a day. There's nothing wrong with that. We all got to do it. I'm not saying Amazon, you have to do Amazon, but I'm saying go online and buy some stuff for your preps. Nothing wrong with that. Just make sure you're not only an online prepper. Um, doing the things is very important. Um, learning to cook, that's a vital skill. Uh, if you're in an apartment, it doesn't matter where you are, you can still cook. I hope you have a stove. <laughs> um, cook your own meals. Go to the grocery store and buy the, buy the buy, blah, what is wrong with me today? Buy the raw ingredients. Cook a meal from scratch. I'm not talking about like prepare macaroni and cheese. That's easy. Anybody can do that. Ma you know, top ramen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, boxed meal. No, I'm talking about from scratch, all the ingredients to make the stuff and start practicing that way. Uh, pick up a little extra, you know, some, go to the camping section of your local store, pick up some things like an emergency blanket, maybe pick up an extra tarp, uh, pick up some extra water containers, some pails, some buckets for food storage, mylar bags. Um, it, it, it really snowballs from there. But Preparedness is just about having some food, basic supplies, basic necessities to allow you to survive bad situations. We call it SHTF, stuff hitting the fan, you know, or the bad word, hitting the fan. But anyway, a lot of the situations are short term. So if you have a week of food for you and your family, that's a great start. Don't be discouraged. That is a great start. It's a wonderful start. You're way better off than probably the vast majority of Americans. Um, if you can have a couple weeks or a month, great. If you can have three months, even better. If you have six months, hoo ya. If you can have a year, yeah, you're golden. If you can have more than that, awesome. Stack it, stack food stockpile food, stockpile water, do all those things. Great. Nothing wrong with it. But you run into storage um, space locations. I did a video on that also. You know, where do, where do we put all this stuff? One of the biggest prepper problems that I run into is where to put all my preps. <laughs> so that's where caches come in. That's where bug out locations come in. That's where, um, you know, sheds, um, your basement, your crawl space, your root cellar, your uh, maybe your fifth wheel, your trailer, your whatever you have, garage, um, your attic. Be or use your imagination. You don't have to have a bed with bed stands and frame, but if you do, you can slide boxes of preps underneath, or you can just put down a bunch of boxes for your preps, lay your box spring, your mattress, or whatever kind of mattress setup you have on top of it, and have that be your bed frame. You know, put one of those. I forget what they're called, but the fancy sheet that hangs over that, you know, makes it look nice. You could do that. They're, they would cover the boxes and you wouldn't even know they're under there. Nobody would ever know they're under there. So different ideas like that. Um, basic preparedness. Yeah. It's just learning some of those simple skills that our forefathers knew, that your grandparents knew. How do you, how do you can? How do, how do you can food? That's something very simple. You can go get a stock pot at the store. You can buy a book on canning. You can watch some videos on canning. And then you can go to the store and buy the stuff to can. You don't necessarily have to grow it in your garden. Go to the grocery store, buy the fruits, buy the vegetables, whatever it may be, and do some canning. Um, here, just a sec. Okay, so I thought that might help with lighting, but it appears to not really be helping that much. Um, yeah, I'm running out of light.
but um, I was hoping a darker background would bring the light out a little bit more. But anyway, so yes, what did your ancestors do? Um, your grandparents, canning, um, dr freeze dry or not freeze drying, dehydrating, um, making jerky, those kind of things. Uh, fitness is a big one. Anybody can do fitness almost anywhere. Uh, body weight, going for a rock, going for a run, those kind of things. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of sit back and take a breath and from you know the homesteading stuff and from hopefully not hopefully not overwhelming everybody with that kind of stuff. Uh, prepping, I believe a good way to go about it is the way I'm going about it. I'm trying to be as self-reliant, self-sufficient as possible, producing my own calories so that yeah, I have food storage, but that's for a backup plan to my food production plan. My food production plan does not, is not at the point yet where it'll feed our whole family for the year. So we would have to rely on our prepare our preps, our food storage. But if I if I included some hunting, fishing, stuff like that, some foraging, now we might be in the ballpark of feeding our family. And especially if it was SHTF happens, psh, I'd go over there with the with the uh, uh, Maddox and I would tear up all the ground and I would plant everything I have because in that situation, I wouldn't care what it looks like. I'm still trying to make it look fairly decent, not like my yard's all trashy and stuff like that. I would just tear up everything and plant everywhere though. And then I probably would be at the point where I could produce all the calories. Uh, but that's only fruits and vegetables. You still need your proteins and stuff like that. That's where hunting, fishing comes in, um, foraging, trapping, snaring, all that stuff. So I know people tend to get overwhelmed by the enormity of preparedness. You know, how do I prepare for nuclear fallout? Like I talked about the other day. How do I prepare for um, grand solar minimum? How do I prepare for crop failures? How do I prepare for civil war? How do I prepare for foreign invasion? How do I prepare for a real <laughs> um, pandemic? Those kind of things. Take a breath, slow down. Basics, start with the basics. Work your way up. I highly advocate the self-sufficiency aspect, the homestead aspect. I say, I refer to this as the AP homestead, Asymmetric Preparedness Homestead. This isn't really a homestead. I don't have a ton of land, okay? I have enough where I could definitely plant a lot more area if I tore out all the blackberries that like you see in the background that grow everywhere here. So many people were like, oh man, I would love to have blackberries. Send me some starts. Shoot, I'll cut down the whole forest of them and send them all to you. <laughs> I mean, we have so many blackberries here. We, it's hard to keep up on keeping them back from taking over everything. They would grow over, take over my entire house if I didn't keep them back for a couple years. Seriously, they grow everywhere. But anyway. And that's a good foraging opportunity, I'll tell you that, though. When blackberries are in season, oh my gosh, we got like thousands of pounds of blackberries if we wanted to, if we really wanted to pick them all. But anyway, oh yeah, that's, you know, in, in a nutshell, there's so much to preparedness, but take a step back, take a deep breath, plan it out. That's another good thing. Prepper notebook. Make a notebook. Start keeping track of everything you have. Hopefully you'll have your, your boxes, wherever you store your stuff, labeled. But know where, what you have, and know where it's located. That's very important, because if you need to bug out, you need to know what to grab and where it is. Um, also, if you are using that stuff, you need to be rotating through it. So you need to know the dates, uh, of the expiration dates. The purchase, you can write purchase dates, expiration dates, but also be mindful of expiration dates or sell-by dates doesn't mean the food goes bad that day or at midnight that day. I mean, seriously, a lot of foods are good way, way past their expiration dates. They're opening canned goods found in uh, World War II bunkers and eating them, Cold War area bunkers and eating them. They found, uh, what was it, wheat in a tomb of a pharaoh that was still viable. They planted it and it grew. You know, you gotta be careful. Obviously, if you open up a can and it's bad, don't eat it. Don't be stupid. Don't say, oh, asymmetrical preparedness, 
Michael told me it's good. No, you still got to be smart. You still got to use your head. It still could be dangerous potentially, but rotate through your stuff, have a plan, have a system. That's very important. So yeah, that's that topic for now. This is the first harvest other than green onions on the AP homestead this year. So we got a bunch of Swiss chard harvested from that plant and that plant. And a bunch more getting ready, getting close. Kids are riding their bikes. We're having fun. We're doing the things. While adding two more container <coughs> containers to our garden, I thought of showing you this part of it. A lot of times this is what we do. Just grab a bunch of like sticks, twigs, rotten wood, stuff like that around the yard, which helps pick up the yard and helps it be cleaner. And it just provides a bunch of compostable material on the bottom that will rot and provide nutrients to the soil. So that's one thing you can do to get rid of all the stuff, clean up yard waste and stuff like that around, pick up little sticks all over the place. Like around here, keep your yard nice and clean and provide good material for your raised beds or your containers, or if you want to bury it under, if you're doing a hookah culture bed, those kind of things. There's another example of stuff you can also put in your containers, in your raised beds, whatever. Grass clippings, like if you're mowing your lawn, you could put some in there, some in there also. Don't like fill the whole thing up or put in too many so it just turns into a rotten mess. But you can definitely put some in. Uh, that's just an example. I'll probably put some more in as we go around trimming weeds and stuff like that. Make sure you don't get the roots though. Don't put roots in there or it'll start growing up and you'll have a bunch of weeds in your containers or your raised beds. But that's another thing you can do with yard waste. These are two new containers that we added. Um, we had them ready yesterday. I just got a chance to plant them today. So as you can see, those seeds, the bag of seeds I've been going through, figuring out what I'm going to add and what we need to add. So what I did is, as you can see there, kale and tomatoes. So what I did was I planted like one, two, three, four tomato plants on, the, on each edge and then a row of kale and a row of kale in each of these. So basically, because it'll take the tomato plants a while to grow up and to be ready to get big, all that kind of stuff like that. Kale grows a lot quicker, so I'm looking to get a harvest of kale before the tomatoes get really tall enough to impede or interfere with the kale. So that's the idea with these two containers. I think it'll work really well. They're in a good location, lots of sunlight. Um, it, May, I don't know if it's too late for planting tomatoes by seed, but we also have some, uh, we have neighbors that we always get starts from. We get big tomato starts from them, so not counting on it, but they'll probably hook us up. So that those can always go in these places if the tomatoes aren't doing well. So that's the idea with those two containers for the day. These two new containers I was talking about just a minute ago, putting the, you know, um, what twigs and rotten wood and you know grass clippings and stuff in the bottom of so they're full now and this one has been planted in um, table queen squash and watered this one has not been planted yet we'll get to that in a little bit okay I hope you enjoyed the video we talked about a bunch of prepping related stuff preparedness basic stuff how to start you know, just a little bit of, we've talked about a bunch of different things. And I showed you some of the stuff we've been doing around here. So, I, like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that you subscribe, please. And comment below. Comments are also very welcome. Um, and also, you know, comment on other people's comments. Enjoy some conversation back and forth. That's good for you guys. It's good for you to build the community and so you guys get to know each other and stuff like that. And it's good for me and the algorithm to get lots of comments. So that helps. And the thumbs up is always awesome. And sharing the videos is always also very awesome. So I thank you guys very much for being here. I hope that you are prepping a little every day. And I hope that you're prepping out of peace of mind, not out of fear. Uh, because we talk about it here all the time. Prepping is living insurance. Uh, but we don't do it out of fear. Uh, because we trust in him and ourselves. And we do our part. So please do that. Have a wonderful day. And blessings to you and yours.